way I haven't done this already. I don't know if it's like I've got a deep-seated fear of death that's preventing me from wanting to go to where the Parisians die. I don't know if it's because maybe I'm afraid I'll be allergic to bone dust or perhaps they'll just leave me down there and lock me in, you know, a tiny little tomb. Whatever it is, it's been three and a half years. I've never gone into the catacombs of Paris, but today, at long last, I'm gonna do it. Let's go check out the catacombs of Paris and see where way, way too many people uh, are stacked on top of each other, quite literally. Yep. I remember, safety first, which means looking both ways before a van runs you over too. Put it. done a lot of selfie camming because uh, for those of you that are just tuning in for the first time I've been testing different phone cameras to see how the vlogging goes and I'm on the iPhone 11 Pro right now and uh, it doesn't have a feature to switch to the selfie cam while you're already filming so I haven't just haven't been using it very much to try it out but I'm gonna try and do that right now Tandy and I are headed to the catacombs it is the most expensive thing I've done in a long time as far as Parisian monuments go 24 euros to get in so uh, just just to be just be be forewarned, it's not cheap. You also wanna get your time ticket in advance because if you don't, you end up waiting in a super long line and we may still end up waiting in a line for all I know at this rate. So we're gonna find out when we get there. But uh, we're gonna ride our bikes straight down, just south towards Montparnasse and uh, park our bikes and go check out a whole bunch of dead people. And away we go. We're here. The line, uh, I have no idea. I think we should be able to skip the line. We're about to find out. Oh, that's like nothing for a line. Usually it like stretches all the way around the block. Anyways, welcome to the entrance to the catacombs. We have uh, tickets. Remember to wear your mask. Merci All right, that was easy enough. Literally just showed it to him and then good to go. Oh, we scanned here, that's why. Gives you a winky face because it's not sure you're coming back. <laughs> yeah, Tanya came prepared. She's got a sweatshirt. I, I wore my sweatshirt the other day when it was too hot, and then I didn't bring it with me today on the one day that I could have used it. 15 degrees, so it's cold. No, it's cold. 57. 57 in Fahrenheit. That's that's chilly. Okay, so far there's a disappointing amount of bones. Everything's painted white, but that doesn't count. Unless we find out later that we're actually walking within the, the skeleton of a giant. I this was a domino museum. <laughs> they say there are also 100 and I think 32 steps on the way down and 121 on the way back up, so. Are we coming up a different way? Oh yeah, no, I hope nobody's coming up the stairs. Except maybe zombies. Wow, okay, I'm dizzy. Yeah, I guess it's probably not the place to go in the zombie apocalypse. No, exact opposite. Opposite place you want to go. Okay, so it's pretty nuts. There's a we're going up these stairs. These look way spookier. I'm getting into this. So basically, the quarries were abandoned. These quarries have been existed since the Middle Ages. Parisian limestone has been mined since Roman times and used for building because it's just so good. And then in the 13th century, they went underground and that's what like Notre Dame is built out of is the actual underground quarried stuff. And they just kept quarrying underground. And uh, then they were abandoned in the 17th century. And then they started opening up like sinkholes in the middle of the city. So Louis XVI had to do something about that. And they started reinforcing all of these old abandoned quarries down below and then ended up turning them into ossuaries or bone depositories, however you want to say it, <laughs> because uh, basically the cemetery in the middle of town, Les Anacons over at Lit Al, was overflowing and becoming a health risk. So they moved all the bones here and we're about to see six million bones or skeletons and remains of six million people. 
for a moment when you think about, oh my gosh, a cemetery that's overflowing and becoming a health risk. What exactly does that mean? And maybe I don't want to think about that. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to think about that either. Ew, yeah. Well, and the owl was already a disgusting like marketplace filled with rats yeah. and produce and everything. So you can, I don't, want to, I don't want to know what they mean by health risk, to be honest. And so, yeah, they reorganized it down here and then reopened it in the early 19th century by the looks of things. That's what we're about to go see. There are over 6 million people buried here and it takes up less than 1 800th of the entire total available space in the old quarries of Paris, which is bananas. For the initials of the guy who built this brace to keep this up, according to what we just read. Or no, it's not, it says I-9, I-9G. I'm, I don't know, I'm not an expert, don't trust me, but the, they were saying that the guys who built all of these different braces to keep uh, you know, the city from collapsing into the catacombs would leave their initials and the date on the braces that they made, so. Igor Neuf Gerald, I guess. 1783. Notice old tool marks on the ceiling made by the, there we go. Another hot tip, don't wear vans down here. This is the exact kind of wet stone that they slide on a little bit. <laughs> quite the dramatic entrance. We went through a very long, like, straight tunnel, and now we're getting to the deteriorating stone. Look at these, look how loose these look. Like, I'm worried, I don't wanna... Places are just up. So cool. We still haven't seen a single bone, I don't think. Maybe we're walking by all kinds of bones and they've just been carved into stone, but it's so spooky. We've been walking for like six minutes. We've gotta be getting close. Avenue de Montsouris. Hey, look at that. Oh, I see lights. Get the touching out of your system here. Look at them. Wow. Here are COVID <laughs> That is great. I don't have my yeah. <laughs> high five. Oh, Do you think it's this evenly stacked all the way back? Yeah. <laughs> I tried using slow mo on that guy, but it didn't work. Efficiency sake, you have to stack them, right? But that doesn't mean that you have to 
Well, that's fair. That's fair. I don't know, I'd rather be a, a, a part of a piece of artwork when I died than dumped in a ditch. Uh, yeah, I'm not into the burial thing at all. <laughs> So interesting to see all the different churches that you know from around town and how their dead got redeposed here, re redeposited here. Also interesting, it's just, I don't know, I don't feel, I feel, Tanya, would you say that you're, does this make you feel a little bit uncomfortable to no. see it like this? I'm remembering your commentary about like being a little bit weirded out by the uh, the organization and artistic touch to this, right? Oh, yes, that's decorative, yeah, that's, I mean, that's a choice that somebody came up with. And maybe places. that's a way to be hollowed about the bones, but mm -hmm. did they really figure that, you know, thousands of Americans and other tourists would come through <laughs> seeing all their family members like They may not have been thinking about that. Although, that's, they did open it up right away for viewing. They definitely did mean it to be a spectacle in its own way. Somebody touched those ones and they fell. That was bad. Are we coming to the end There's here? a small tourist underneath that pile. There's a small tourist under that pile. <laughs> I actually kind of really, I, I like, I don't like it in the sense that I'm excited about it, but it doesn't, definitely doesn't bother me. And I, I think, hey, your bones are, you know, you're, they're about all you do leave behind, so might as well contribute to the city's arts and craft project. I don't know, That's maybe that's a really bad way of putting it, but, I don't know. It's. I think it's kind of fascinating, and it is a little bit morbid, but it's also the reality of, like, I guess what's not settling in for me is that these are all real people. I think that's what I'm trying to, what I'm it's stopping like, to, like, take in, like... need to not go, oh, yeah, this is somebody's family. This was our mother. This was their kid. This was... Yeah. Um, but they, but they, they all died. It's not like they, you know, they were, they were died and buried in a cemetery, and then they just got moved here, so... Who knows what everybody died from, but, yeah, it's not, it's not like we're walking through a... A war crime museum right now, so I feel like that changes. Well, oh, pointing him right in the wrong place, but I feel like that changes the vibe significantly. I don't know. It's the it's the difference between being in a hole somewhere and being a part of this. Which to each their own. Not all of us are gonna like that or feel comfortable with it. Which is I should probably should make put a little scary scary movie warning at the beginning of this video, but. I mean, it's not scary. It's not. You know, I, I don't really see a sign that there's lots of images of insects or. No, no. Other things. There's... It's very clean. Not only are you going to see lots of bones, but there's a really good chance you're going to get dripped on because a lot of these ceilings are literally dripping wet. Paris, we're like down, I don't know if we're at, like, they didn't mention the water table in the diagrams of how deep we are, but we're like pretty far down. Whatever 133 steps is, I'm sure I can put the actual amount on the screen. Uh, is that, was that the, was that the, that can't be the end already. Wow. That was, that was a lot of bones all packed in there. Oh wow, is that really? Hold on. No, we got more. So this is probably like a nice posh church because they've got a nice steli here. <laughs> this steli is obviously a bit bigger than the other one. Uh, mossy skulls. to be really cavernous something a little bit more grand and dramatic but it's also hard to uh overstate the drama of all those <laughs> of six million people stacked on top of each other in like a pseudo artistic macabre display of uh 
you know, eternal resting place. Or, well, maybe not eternal. Maybe in a hundred years they'll move them again. Who knows? But until then, you know, they're there for now. Whew. Exit by the gift shop. Eat your heart out, Karin. It's Skull City. <laughs> That's very... It's a snow globe. <laughs> uh, I think in this neighborhood we're allowed to take our masks off for a second. Whew. Overall, um, that was awesome. I think for me, the thing is, I really appreciate also, it's kind of like I went to the, the Montmartre Cemetery the other day. Yeah, it's And it's really nice to, I don't know, just be reminded that we are gonna die. <laughs> it's, there's no getting around that. Stardust? Yeah, we're all stardust. We're all made from, we're all made from stars. And that's a nice thought. And there's a bunch of stars down there hanging out in the, uh, in the quarries of Paris, the former quarries of Paris. Well, and it also, uh, the question, what do you do with millions of bodies that you don't know where to put them in the midst of a health crisis. Although it was over more than a hundred years that they put them down there. It's true. That took a while. It's a lot of bodies without, uh, without modern day excavation equipment too. Yeah. They had to actually physically dig all those up, I'd imagine. Yeah, and they have to picture a horse-drawn heart covered in the middle of a knife. Bring out <laughs> your dead. Oh God. Anyways, I would highly recommend it. It's not something that I've ever been super interested in doing personally. We are a long ways away from where we went into. I know exactly where we are. Oh, wow, yeah. we walked yeah, a long ways. Walking. So yeah. you, you do cover a lot of ground underground. That's that exit. I would never even have known that was there. It's just the gift shop. I'm glad I finally went. Would I put it at the top of my list personally? I mean, yeah, it'd be, I, I would put it in probably, if you're here for two weeks kind of a thing, definitely yeah. would do that. And if you're here now, uh, it's really easy to get in. So definitely do it uh, because you don't have to wait in line forever. But do book your tickets in advance and you can skip the line. Uh, you just got to make sure you do it probably at least a day in advance. We were trying to book them last night and they were booking out in front of us. So if you want to do it like two days in advance, they'll get in there. And for those of you wondering where Sarah is, because Sarah's the one that always wanted to go to the catacombs, she abandoned us and went to the south of France. So, you know, don't feel too bad for her. Yeah. Anywho, hop back on the bikes and, and uh, you know, go get something to eat or more coffee. I don't know. I'll be above. Santé. And back at Trez. I haven't been to Trez in a long time, but it was part of the game. Fantastic spot to come get custom uh, lemonade cocktails, beer and a lot of cozy American, often Southern comfort food. It's a really, really good spot to go. Anyways, thanks to Dean Thompson for sending us out today. He's our patron producer of the day. Really appreciate you sending us, buddy. And uh, thanks for, you know, being here and being generally amazing. And for the rest of you, thanks for watching. And I'll see you again bright and early tomorrow morning for, uh, you know, more Paris. If the weather holds, maybe the Eiffel Tower will be involved. Uh, if the weather does what it's predicted to do, then I'll, maybe I'll just lie in bed and we'll watch paint dry together. It'll be really fun. Anyways, I'll see you tomorrow for that.